Okay, so we're here down with the, the Alpha apparatus, and it's a little bit disconnected right now, but it makes it easier to explain, actually. So what happens is the antiprotons from the antiproton decelerator come down this beam line, and we catch them here in this uh, superconducting antiproton trap. S store them there for a while, cool them when we need them. We shoot them into this device, which is the main atom trap. This is where we synthesize and capture antihydrogen. So normally this is rolled over a meter so that these things are in line. But we mix the antiprotons and the positrons, which are anti-electrons, inside this magnetic trap. They create antihydrogen, which is then trapped, can't escape. Then we can do any type of experiment we would like on it, shine a laser on it, do this charge measurement, even try to study gravity, but it all takes place inside this superconducting atom trap. That's the business end of alpha. Okay, so the latest result has to do with the charge neutrality of antihydrogen. Antihydrogen is a negative antiproton, a positive positron. You put those together, they should have zero net charge. We are trying to test that experimentally, and we do that in a very easy way. The antihydrogen is trapped in kind of a magnetic bowl. Now let's assume it had a charge. If we hit it with an electric field, it'll get some energy from that, that kick with the electric field. If we keep kicking it, it'll eventually climb out of the bowl and be lost. And when we go to look for it, it won't be there. So we do a very simple experiment. We trap some antihydrogen, we keep kicking it electrically, and then we see what happens. We compare that to an experiment in which we don't kick it and see what happens. And in that way, you can put a limit on how large the net charge of antihydrogen could be. And that's what we're publishing today. 